starting with a central puncture, adding more viscoelastic, and creating a posterior capsule opening somewhat smaller than the optic of the implant and concentric with the optic. The leaves of capsule are then anterior to the optic to avoid pearl formation depositing posterior to the optic. Again, the PCCC is accomplished using capsulorexis strategies, starting with a small puncture, adding viscoelastic to push the vitreous face away to try to maintain an intact vitreous face. I have used uh, Helon or Helon GV to have as clear a view as possible. And here, some viscoelastic is being added to push the vitreous face away before extending the tear beyond the central puncture. Sometimes a light reflex can be in the way and uh, the eye may have to be turned to one side or the other. And then the tear is extended until the flap can be grasped with the forceps and as with anterior capsular rexus, Vector forces are applied to create a tear of the proper diameter and concentric with the optic of the IOL. Poster capsule is thinner and it rolls up and uh, may be difficult to re-grasp, particularly if the viscoelastic pushes the capsule flap backwards. This child had a somewhat granular posterior capsule after the lens was removed. This cataract uh, was a secondary cataract. The child has had treatment for retinoblastoma, and it was felt advisable to avoid vitrectomy and to avoid necessity of a YAG laser capsulotomy, if at all possible. You can see now more viscoelastic is being added to again ensure that the vitreous face remained intact. So with this technique we are avoiding anterior vitrectomy and Hopefully the visual axis will remain clear in this particular case because of the capsule leaflets ending up in front of the IOL. You can see that frequent re-grasping is advantageous with posterior capsular rexus just as with anterior capsular rexus. And one has to take very short segment tears and release and inspect and re-grasp frequently to achieve a properly sized opening and one concentric with the optic of the IOL. More viscoelastic being added. Sometimes the viscoelastic being added is to disperse debris or air bubbles to improve visualization. We first used this technique in April of 1993, and as of February 1994, we have used the technique in eight cases. So far, we haven't had the pacification of the visual axis in any case. This uh, tissue fragment will be removed after a scissor snip is taken underneath it to ensure no attachment to the vitreous. Dr. Tobias Noyhan first described optic capture with the anterior capsule. This was uh, written up in the International Edition of Ocular Surgery News in March 1992. He describes placing the haptics in the 
sulcus and then popping the optic into the anterior chamber, whereas we will place the lens in the bag and then pop the optic into the posterior chamber. So now the lens on this picture is grasped by the posterior capsule as opposed to being grasped by the anterior capsule, capsularexis. In the surgical footage, we will now show placing the lens through the posterior capsule opening by nudging it posteriorly and inferiorly at least 90 degrees away from the haptic junctions to get one side of the optic through the posterior capsule opening. And then the other side will be nudged as well. And you'll see an immediate stabilization once the lens pops into the posterior chamber and is grasped by this opening that is smaller than the optic.